Okay, so we are filming this for YouTube. Hello, everyone. Hello, panel. Hello, the, hello, people of YouTube. So today's conversation is very interesting. We're talking about creating magic. These are some of the creative friends of mine who I've got in on this conversation. We're going to, I'm going to ask them questions about how they create magic, what, what their way of thinking is behind that. But first, let's introduce them to you. Now, I know you know Nadav, but Nadav, tell us a little something about the creation side of your uh, repertoire. So uh, what I like most about magic is creating stuff, building stuff, coming up with ideas. Uh, I usually do gimmicks because it's, I feel it's like, like it's easier for me because I, I know a way around crafts and it gives me more freedom to use specially made stuff when I try to come up with stuff. But uh, yeah, that's my background. Interesting. I definitely want to ask you a few questions about the arts and crafts side of it, but uh, let's, let's move on to Martin before that. Martin, you're very different yes. from Nada, isn't it? Tell us, tell us yeah, why you're so different. Yeah, completely different. So, first of all, I love gimmicks, but I don't use gimmicks at all. Like, as I said, like when I hold a gimmick in my hand, my hand just naturally shakes. And I like this kind of like anytime, anywhere, on the spot to do stuff, yeah? Okay. And the things with gimmicks, uh, it's very clever to design them, like what, whatever you want to do. But at the same time, for me, it's kind of... Do you know what I mean? I'm not comfortable with it. Like I try to use something like use gimmicks and change it to un gimmick stuff. Right. You know? So mainly but you my are a and creator. Yeah, my mind stuff is more like cards basically. Cards and just a little bit of mental stuff. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Maybe we can ask you to show yeah. us something later at some point. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's move on to obviously everybody knows Kieran, but Kieran, tell us about yourself. <laughs> Pleasure. Um so I don't really think about magic in terms of gimmicks or slight hand or any of it really. I always just want to do what I can do, if that makes sense. So for example, I, if I have a concept, I just think, how can I make that possible? And then how can I achieve that? And then I, I try and achieve that with whatever method I can find. I, I always find, and I with great respect to both uh, creators, I always find that we, we sometimes get trapped in this concept of I do this way, I'm pure. But really, if you're a magician, you, your magic should be available at all times, even if it does use a gimmick or if it makes it harder. Uh, for example, if I produce ice and I get known for that, then if someone comes up to me in the street, I should be able to do that because I've committed to that concept. Right. So therefore, I shouldn't be thinking in the terms of, Oh, I'm a magician. I, I do this, and you know I understand that that's a weird way of thinking. But my my thinking has always been that we are the magic. Uh, we're not magicians. We are the magic. So I, I and I've always believed uh, with Tommy Wonder's great concepts of it takes three things to be a great magician: show, showmanship, performance, geometry, and sleight of hand. And if you mix all those together, you can have devastating consequences. And I just wow. feel like we shouldn't limit ourselves as as performers and I've always thought that as a magician so cool it's uh, nice that we have very interesting different takes on creating. that's that's what we love about it so feel free if you all want to jump in and ask questions to the other person also feel free to do that so the question for Nadav is about arts and crafts uh, when you said you love creating that kind of magic what sort of skills you need to learn or what kind of skills you actually practice for that um, I try practice as much as I can. Uh, woodwork, leather work, uh, just every every bit that I can. Sewing stuff. I wow. You can carpentry and that sort of thing. Yeah, everything can be useful at some point if you're trying to achieve something. Uh, right now, I'm working on a gimmick drink, so I need a silversmith, and I don't know anything about doing stuff like that. So I came to a professional and she's working on it right now. Wow. But if I could do it myself, I would because it costs me less money and it brings me more like um, control of what do I do. Right. So I try so, to learn as much as I can. So do you have like a workshop in your house? I mean, with like 10 different types of glues and, and all of that yeah, sort of I stuff? Yeah, actually, yeah. You, you nailed wow. it. Yeah, I got a workshop that you're actually... I'm actually standing right in front of it. It's in my room. Wow. wow. Um, I have like tons of glues, uh, colors, sprays, uh, right. anything you want, leathers, uh, all, all sorts of stuff. So what's your process when it comes to making? So let's say if you're, uh, uh, you said you like to use everyday objects, you'll, you'll basically break apart like a lighter and then see what, what, how to fix it back or what, what sort of, what's your process like? 
um, when I tried to come up with a, a gimmick, let's say, when I came to the conclusion, like, like Kieran said, that uh, it, it needs to be a gimmick, I tried to use like an object you will already carry or you will already use in the routine. Okay. Let's say I want to do stuff when the routine already uses a lighter and I need to hide a gimmick in there. I'll hide the gimmick in the lighter instead of having like a third or, or a second object secretly hidden or I'll try to, you know, I'll try to use the things I already have or already carry with me if I can. Mm. So do you, does most of your work really is creating magic for other magicians or do you actually get out there and perform a lot? I perform, but I'm, I mean, I'm more of a social performer. I don't, okay. I don't take money. I did do a few gigs, but I usually just perform for fun and make stuff for other magicians or for myself. I noticed that one thing in the creators, I don't know why, but maybe people like Angelo Carbone, I mean, maybe probably Kieran is different from that, but I think most creators usually don't perform, maybe they don't like performing, or, but, they, but they, they always want to, they, they, I don't know, they just create stuff for magicians. They're more like magicians, magicians, if that makes sense. Uh, Martin, what about you? Are you a performer to yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm a performer as well, but I was not now, but, but I like to more like create stuff. Like more like card magic and really stuff like this. Now creating, yeah, the, the stuff into my blood and it's, I don't know why, but it's to create and stuff. And okay. necessarily shouldn't not only like the original stuff, but sometimes I give like little tips and the small stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Like for example, uh, if you're doing a like a diagonal palm shift or any move you you want to do, for example, like it's a difficult move, but I give like little tips on doing this how to make it easier to make it more mm. like hands off, for example, you know. But yeah, uh, just something like I can. Not many people. I'm, I say this to every time. Like I'm more like an underground magician. Not many people yeah. knows me that much. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I want it this way. And I want it this way because, and I haven't released anything yet. But if I release something, they'll say, "Who is this guy?" And then I'll come up like, do you know what I mean? Try to show myself like that. Yeah. But right now, you know, like right now, not many people knows me that much, unless if they're my friends or the yeah. magicians that knows me. But, but now people I'm are watching on, you on YouTube. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but right now I'm working on so many different stuff, like as you know, the coding, some mental, yeah. some code stuff, and yeah. then the Nate is ready to publish it soon now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so, so for Kieran, let's talk about your uh, God Challenge. I don't want to say Britain's or America because I think I think your stuff is on a lot of God Challenge shows. So, do you actually approach people? Or they approach you how do you because I, I've, I know you actually performed on them but you also consult on these shows so what is, <laughs> what is that process like a lot of people don't know they've seen a magician do a very famous trick like having a tea come out of a can or whatever the case may be and then people think it's that person's trick well actually it's your creation so uh, number one is how do you uh, feel if somebody else does your trick and number two is how do you get in contact with people who are doing these shows um, well, normally when I've, when I've done these shows, I've been in Europe. So I, I, because I obviously I have another talent, as you know, uh, yeah. I get approached because of the, the uniqueness of it. So, yeah. and then no, normally what happens is, um, I, I get a, a, approached by a magician that's going on a show and they are, they normally ask me, uh, if they can use my work and if I have any tips, how would they use it? And I'm, I'm always very free with, um, with most of that. Uh, the only time I haven't said yes is when it's been for us because I don't really understand why you would go on a TV show like that and With not somebody do else's. something you invented. It makes no sense because yeah. are you getting credit for fooling Panatella or mm -hmm. you getting, cause you just found the trick. So surely I could just go buy a trick that I know will fool them and do it. So uh, that's the only Good time point. I've said no. Yeah. Um, I, even though I, that's not a show that I'm, you know, I'm interested in, but it's not my, Go, I, I don't like that pressure, but will it? Um, but in terms of people performing my stuff, I don't mind really. I mean, it's just that is the ne the nature of the business, really, because mm. they need something that's going to be hard hitting. Uh, I was on Germany's Got Talent, and on the same uh, week I was on in the competition, a guy was performing my card and I, so I was actually competing against my own stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and, and the same happened in Italy this year. Uh, another magician did the Kendrick. Uh, right. the week after and we're in the same competition so I've, I've actually competed 
in those shows where people have performed my stuff while I'm a contestant. So wow. uh, I, I don't think there's, I don't know of any other musician that's ever probably done that. So that's, that's a weird position to be in knowing yeah. that that's your start. They're your designs, but you're not doing them, but you're on the same show. So what's it like? I mean, did you actually beat them or they beat you? Or what's, what was the outcome? So, so normally what happens when I do those shows is it's complicated because I'm brought in just to do the one episode. Um, I remember sometimes I'm brought in to, to compete properly, but normally what happens is I'm kind of more like a guest on it. Well, I think oh. I, I was offered kind of the final of the Italy one this year, last year, sorry. But they, they only asked me a week before and I wasn't ready. Um, I was actually meant to be competing officially uh, as a real contestant on America's Got Talent this year. Right. Um, but unfortunately, I flew out there. And as I flew out there and arrived, they closed the theater down because of what's been going on. So I only oh, just got yeah. out of, of right. LA in time. So that, bit, that sucks because that's like six months I've been preparing for that. So well, could you do it next year? year now? Sorry? You could do it next year though, right? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's something I want to do. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a weird place now because I'm now, I don't know. I, 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 uh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Oh. I mean, it's nice to have those opportunities. Yeah, that's but, so interesting. So you, would, you, would you say most of your work is performing or actually consulting? Everything. So um, I, I perform um, all the time. I'm very fortunate. I get to travel to some really amazing places. Uh, yeah. I, I work with the Saturn Magic Shop. So I, I create and work with them. And then I also work on separate projects, helping improve that, which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I consult and I, I have a, a students that I teach and do magic with as well. Yeah. So nice. I, I'm in a very lucky position where I get to be, I, I get to do all, fit, all, the, all the things. So I get to create, get to perform and I get to teach, wow. uh, which is lovely. Excellent. Because uh, I'm very lucky. So what is the best advice you would give somebody who is creating magic? Uh, anyone jump in. Uh, are you talking more about the thinking of how should it work? Yeah, so let's or say somebody like, says... How do you execute your idea when you already have yeah. it? Let's say somebody says, oh, I want to create magic with a cell phone or I want to create magic with some stones or pebbles or like a little a video game or something. How would they even start doing it? Do you have any like books, advice or DVDs that they can learn from? Or how do you um, get your creativity out there? So... No, no, the, uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. He's already on the right track. He has a ring trick and he's tracked down a silversmith. That's mm -hmm. exactly how you create and make okay. a concept. You have an idea and you follow it through. I mean, I have a friend and he, he's always creating stuff and he says, oh, I create this trick, but it's come out. But I said, you never followed through. You can't claim a trick that you never followed through. You can't say I had mm -hmm. an idea. So the, the, the truth is if you create a concept, it's followed through, but also it comes down to don't get caught into the trap of creating because you want to make some money because you won't make a lot of money in the <laughs> game. You know, that, that's not how it works. You create because I, I feel like you create for yourself. And if you create for yourself, if it's good enough, then you can uh, get it out there. That's why I've always mm. believed that. I never create any of the tricks I invented uh, to sell. I created them because I wanted to do that trick. Well, that's and interesting. That's, that's very good, especially for people who are thinking at home, thinking, oh, I'm going to make some money just by creating magic. So that's not the right attitude to have, you're saying. No, it's, it's, it's a tough business now. If, if it was 10 years ago, when mm. you hear another magician go, yeah, I sold 10,000 DVDs, I'm like, that industry does not exist. I, yeah. I, I, you know, you can still get a hit of three or 4,000. That can happen. But yeah. it, it, it's, it's a rarer thing because economy, but also because magic is more available mm. and it's mental, but 20,000 new tricks come out a year. Wow. Yeah, wow. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. So it's a very overcrowded market. And then it's all, do you have the right company to push you? Do you have mm. the right? Tricks? So a lot of really great tricks get lost. There's so many good tricks that I see that don't get the air because they're not got the flat. And, and, it, and it's a very interesting um, thing of what, what does well, what doesn't do well, and what, what will do well. Um, so you, you never know when there's gonna be a hit. I mean, I remember when I showed Double Cross, like yeah. when I was working at, uh, on another TV show, I personally went, oh, that's a bit meh. If I knew that was gonna be the seller it was, I would've bought steaks in it right there. <laughs> I could have wow. the guy that was, he was selling it, trying to make some money. I would have bought it if I had known 
that was going to be the trick. I think that's probably the best selling trick of the last 10 years. I think they've sold probably, yeah, 30, 40,000 units more. So, so when it comes to creating magic, what should you try to do? Should you try to do the, the best or the strongest kind of magic? Is the magic number one with everyday objects? Number two is it happens in someone's hand. What do you think about when you create? Do you, what, what, what's be the yourself. Be okay. yourself. I mean, that's the symbol. When you do magic, um, Brandon, I've seen you. You do magic that suits you and that you love. You can yeah. see it. And that's yeah. the truth. I, I would give advice to do magic you love. And if you love it, everyone else will love it. I, mm. I personally would never do contact juggling or that type of stuff. But when yeah. I see yeah. you do it, I'm in awe because I can see how much you love it. So you make me love it. Right. That's very good. I like that. I'm actually going to do a talk on contact juggling. And we have a panel of uh, like Miles Thornton. And there's a lot of other yeah. contact jugglers out there who are just getting into magic, who are just getting to that style of magic. So we'll definitely, uh, it'll be an interesting chat to talk about that. But yeah, thanks for that. What are the tricks that generally do well? My question was, so yeah, be yourself. But if I come up with my, my coin routines, obviously I have released something. I don't call myself a creator, but like I, like I, like Kieran was saying, I created stuff for me. And then I was approached by Russ Stevens to put that out on the DVD called Visualize. This is a while ago, 2014, that I released that product. And yeah, a few people buy it, but I don't really see a lot of people doing that stuff. I mean, I don't, it doesn't really sell well because it's, it's a certain kind of magic that fits me. So when you're performing or you're creating magic to the mass community, what do you generally think about? Anyone can jump in here. Uh, when I try to create stuff for the general community of magic, I try to make it as free to use as possible like uh like the, the reason the oxbender sold uh, the oxbender sold so well because you were able to use whatever routine or presentation you wanted mm -hmm. to you were able to the, the the method didn't interrupt with any presentation you wanted to put with it okay and that's a very strong thing to put the the more simple the the method is the easier it is to use mm. the better it will sell in my opinion and also if it's something like people always carry because people, that's why there's so many, there's 101 Sharpie, I, I guess, gimmicks out there, you know, like this Sharpie and that Sharpie. And because I think, I think they realize yeah. is magicians always have Sharpie. So why not make a utility thing with that, with the Sharpie, you know? But yeah. if it's something like a clothing accessory, not everyone is going to wear that type of belt or whatever, you know? Uh, but things like a deck of cards, that's why there's so many gimmicks made with decks of cards. Maybe that's one of the reasons. I don't know. Uh, but then that's just the gimmick side of it. Uh, like Martin is very different because uh, let's get you into the conversation, Martin. Uh, when it comes to non-gimmicks, what, what really is your thought when you look at something and you say, I don't want to go to all that trouble? Maybe it's, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. I Why? mean, the thing is, again, gimmicks, it just, for me, is so beautiful. Like uh, whoever come with, the, come up with the nice gimmicks, I always have respect for them. But the thing is, the gimmicks, like, First, when I started doing magic, gimmicks kind of was a little bit expensive. And also, if I mm. break something, if I lose something, it's gone. Mm. So then I have to go buy another one. I have to get another one. And that mm. was another thing. Because I, I always want to do something like on the street. I wouldn't carry myself as a magician, dressed as a magician. I was really like an outgoing person. And then if someone asked me to do a trick, I just do it on the spot. Like anything. It can be a ring trick, anything. So that's why I didn't really like to carry gimmicks, to be honest, you know? Right. And another thing, because since when I was young, I, will, I like that like card magic stuff. The card magic is something that for me is different. Like nowadays, when you, when you go to a spectator, you ask them to pick a card, they're like, oh my God, another card trick. Yeah. But the thing is with me, cards is something different. And another thing about like creating stuff, I remember like five years ago, I come up with like a turn, a turn stop playing card. And I thought, oh, this might be original, but I find that, oh, someone else done it before. And this kind of put me down a little bit. And I come up with the also any card, any number. I thought a different way. I went to Devonport's magic shop. Mm. I say, I'll come up with this. I was so excited. And say, yeah, Daniel got to have something similar. Not mm. same, but similar. Okay. And I, in, I was sad and I was happy at the same time. I was sad because obviously I thought it was original for some, I just did something nice with any card, any number plot. Mm. And I was happy at the same time because obviously Daniel Garcia is one of my favorite magicians. And if I can think like him, then I'm going the right direction. Right. For me, if I, so that's, that was like the happy part for me. And I tried to come up with the different stuff, different ways. And most of the stuff that I do with cards uh, that I come up with them, 
some of them inspiration from other performers, like maybe do it different way, but I do it another way, basically. And some of them come out my my move because I haven't seen anyone doing it. And like to like one of the thing that I'm trying to figure out is like if I can let's say change a call with a gimmick, how can I do this without gimmick? So mm -hmm. this is kind of push me to think a little bit more. Even though I, I don't it's not like I don't know anything about gimmicks. I know some but I try to do it this way. Like for example if you see uh, you, you take the card and you change it using gimmick. How can I do this without gimmick? You know, so mm -hmm. that's kind of the the inspiration that came from. So how can I push myself? Because obviously, if you come up, with, I mean, making gimmicks, I don't say it's easy and it's not. It's not hard. It's just mm -hmm. somebody really just. I have think to some know people's what you brain do. works very different. Like for me, my brain doesn't work like that. But what you're trying to say in short is that once you know all the moves, so you practice and have your repertoire of a lot of different moves in your arsenal, then you can choose whatever moves you want to. Um, actually, w w another question is, let's say you're a creator, right? Now you've created something, you've got an idea. Where do you take it from there? That's a question that a lot of people might be thinking at home, watching this video thinking, oh, I've got an idea. What do I do? Do you approach a company? Probably Kieran has more, uh, and probably Nadav have got more opinions on this thing. What's like, I don't want to say the best company, but what do you, how do you take it from there? Well, I think about what, what is your trick? I mean, and who are you? I mean, I, I get asked this a lot by a lot of people contact me. I had a nice kid contact me the other day. And it's, mm. and I think you have to think about what, what, what style of magic are you doing? What companies do so well? So now that he did, you did um, the, the ring uh, project with illusionist, right? Mm hmm. It's fantastic. I bought it. I, lo I love ring magic. It's, uh, Thank you. It's my, it's my secret permission, uh, my secret passion. Wow, um, I didn't know that. So you, 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 yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like, I'm a bit weird. I, I don't like stringing magicians my sleight of hand because I always get yeah. a bit nervous. Uh, yeah. I, I, I guess I can hide behind my brain if that makes sense or my weirdness. Uh, but yeah. I, 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 love, I love ring magic. Uh, it's a, it's, I do it around the house all the time. I carry one in my pocket. It's just something, but I don't perform it. There's something I just like to do, okay. uh, like a okay. fidget toy. But yeah. um, I imagine you were probably at a convention and you were showing some people some sick court uh, ring stuff and illusionist approach you. Is that, how did that happen? Is it like that? It was well, such you a big it? coincidence, you know. Um, I, I uploaded a video doing a bunch of original moves and slides on Chris Ramsey's uh, subreddit just thinking in my head so people will watch it and give me some tips in the comments and like four or five days later it's early in the morning and all my friends are calling me and like my phone is ringing like crazy go to chris Ramsey's video go to his new video and i'm watching the video and i'm in it he reacted to my my thing and i i only uploaded one thing i used people upload stuff every day without getting put into the into his video and i only did one thing and i was in there so Cody from Illusionist, Cody Nottingham, saw my video, asked one of the, the guys, I, I think it was Lloyd, to track me down in, the, in Reddit by the username they saw. And they, they, they sent me messages over there when we made into email, we talked via email, and they flew me to New York and we filmed some stuff, we filmed wow. some other stuff that hasn't been released yet. And it was a big, 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 like coincidence and chance and i'm so Amazing fortunate story. yeah mm. and, and wow. it's a good project as well i've seen it i got it i bought it it's really good and i got it i didn't realize that we met at blackboard on the stand and it was only afterwards <laughs> i saw this this video i was like oh, i met that guy <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, but yeah so the main thing uh, is getting but, yourself out there so whatever you're doing show more people yeah. like get your uh, yeah. stuff out there and the more people yeah. see you, get, yeah, absolutely. And that's pretty much how I got approached. I was trying to, I was at this convention. Well, actually, a lot of magic conventions, just showing my stuff with my coins and such people. And then that's when I got approached. So yeah, get yourself out there. So in conclusion, um, t tell us something that you're selling at the moment, so people can actually watch your stuff. If someone doesn't really know you, do you have any projects coming out or anything? Uh, I'm I'm currently selling only one project. It's the ring project uh, Kieran just talked about. Yeah. Um, it's called the Circle. Uh, available at uh, Illusionist. Okay. Uh, it's a download uh, with good. a bunch of original slides and moves with the ring. And uh, I have some more stuff coming out. Uh, one of them should be out pretty soon. It's a okay. Tone and Restored. Okay. 
and uh, yeah some more stuff in the future maybe so i'll put your instagram actually i put everyone's instagram in the description of this video below on youtube so if anyone wants to click on that you can go check them out make sure you follow them uh to see whatever's new coming up martin do you have anything to to uh, sell coming out in the future uh no i know you're I mean, writing a book kind of yeah something because the thing is like i can you know about the, the coding system that that the reason is right now not many people are doing coding stuff you know not many people bother about coding stuff but i come up with the simplest coding system uh hopefully not many people have done it but it's very simple direct because you can do it over the sky you can do it over the phone you can do it literally one by one uh right but Again, mine two things into cards. So I'm working on some stuff, and I'm show to some. Uh, I show to uh, Peter Naudi and other people. They just I try to like get them to make this as a project. But I wanted to make it as a booklet because the thing is, they're not routines, routines, but they're more like moves, like uh, for for his productions as well. Because okay. I I believe there are so many routines out there, like not people do tired of re uh, learning new routines you know mm. i believe like the classic routines they're the most beautiful ones because in my opinion you don't need more routines there are some routines you're just basically system. giving moves to people yeah for example if you want to like for example if you want to make a meal you can add some soy you can add the spices there are the spices in that in the whole meal basically mm. like the ones i do is the spices make them nice for example if you're doing it like a car revolution if you do something like this again this is nothing it's simple. You just have to turn a card. It's something more yeah. like flashy. Do you know what I mean? So they're yeah. not more things, but they're more like fancy move for its productions, like this kind of stuff, color changes. Cool. And that's what I want to make as a small booklet. So what about Kieran? Where, do, what do you have to sell, and where can people buy your stuff? Um, so I've I've, <laughs> I've got quite a lot of projects out. There. I know. I, I know. I'm, a, I'm a, weirdly. I went out. I'm on twenty. Believe it or not. Wow. 20 project so would yeah. the best thing be for people to follow your instagram uh, and then they can get in touch with you on there yeah, and well, ask the you whatever the best place is satin magic um okay. go and have a, all my stuff's on satin magic apart from my penguin lecture obviously which is on penguin but satin magic right. is the best place to look at my stuff and it, and some of it is the only place to find some of my stuff because uh, I stopped selling my stuff wholesale about a year and a half ago, two years. So some of right. my stuff is only sold on that site. So okay. um, I just wanted to add one more thing. Yeah. It's not about me, but it's about your DVD. Uh, your DVD was amazing. It's a really good DVD. You're talking about me um, personally or? Yeah, yeah. So okay, okay. Um, okay. 2014, <laughs> was the end of an era. So DVDs started to be phased out. So sales of DVDs. So I, I honestly believe had that come out five or six years before, it would have mm. been a bigger hit. I mean, I'm sure the people, and, and when you talk about, um, you don't see people do it. It's an interesting thing. I, I must have met hundreds of people that say, I bought your trick, but it's in my drawer, I haven't done it. Um, so I think, you know, and maybe the people that do do it would probably be too embarrassed to come up and speak to you. So <laughs> I, I think there probably is people doing your stuff. It's just, mm. you probably just so, haven't I mean, met I'm, them yet. Personally, I don't really mind. I'm not really looking no. at DVD sales, and that's what I mean personally. I mean, I'd rather um, get people, you know, following my YouTube channel and watching what I do yeah. here, really. It's, uh, but, I make my money a good... through residencies and performing. So It is a good project, though. You should be proud oh, thank of you, it. Kieran. Thank and, you very and, much. And, yeah, I'm, 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 that was my basically oh. my life's work on that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so um, uh, another question for Nadav is your creating process behind this. How does your brain work when you want when you want to start creating something? Um, okay, when I want to start creating something, I first think there are multiple ways to come up with an idea. You can either find a method and put a, put an effect on it. Mm -hmm or find an effect you want to do and try to figure out which method works the best. And then I do both. Some people do only one of them. There are other methods people use to come up with ideas. And uh, when you come up with the idea, the first thing people ask is how do I release it? How do I contact with people? How do I make it happen? And I think the most important process is to give it time because when you, when you first come up with an idea, it's not finished yet. It will never be finished, but it will be much, much better than it is now. Oh, yeah. Um, 
some of the the gimmicks I'm working on now look nothing alike, or even worse, nothing like the thing I first came up with. It's completely different. It evolves over time. You fix this thing and you change this little thing, and someone gives you a tip about this, and eventually it's a completely different thing that looks nothing like the the first thing you came up with. Mm. So yeah. and, and and you need time to work on it and actually, you know, present it and practice it and actually give the people when you sell it something that was tested in real life you know it's such an important thing yeah very interesting how it all evolves and and you have to test it because what happens a lot of people say oh i bought this project but clearly the person who created this doesn't perform it in the real world because there's a lot of things that the methods that we use to create certain illusions won't really work in the real world because of certain situations or what you're wearing or where you are so that's a good point for that too so a lot of people watching this YouTube video, sometimes they, 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 they just listen to these conversations and some people watch it. So for the people watching right now, um, Martin, do you want to show us something or show the people what you're working on or what you're creating? Yeah, so it, I have one little move. It's, again, it's more like a, a production, but it's, okay. it looks so, it's based on inspiration from like Dan and Dave or this people, but I'll make it easier. So the idea is just to say stop, stop. use this cut here. The jack of heart. Yep. Watch the jack. I leave it somewhere in the middle. Give one shuffle. Now the idea is to cut the deck and find your card at the same time. So here's the idea, which right here. Is this your card? That was the card. So and then all the four eight jacks. Wow. That's basically this kind so of. That's movement. one of your routines that you created. Okay. Yeah. So is it is. It has to be like this. I have to be short, visual, and get to the point quick. I don't want to get ask them to count, right. do this, do that. It has to be visual. Okay. And most important, it's very good for cameras as well. You know, right. it's good to, not, yeah. So I think your 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 um, catering for very niche audience, uh, magicians, because I think I'm pretty much like you. I'm the same. A lot of my tricks I perform are very visual. Some people, some magicians like to have a lot more patter in the act, but I think what you want to do is quick visual stuff and it's more flourishy if I've noticed. Uh, uh. But anyway, there's yeah, nothing kind of, right yeah. or wrong about these styles. It's just a different style. So Kieran, <laughs> do you have anything to show us? Yeah, of course. Uh, let me show you this. So two pilots. Okay. See them? Yeah. If we snap one and a half, like this, Mm -hmm. We lick it, we can stick it back together just like that, kind of. But look, if you do this, yeah, I don't have any water, so this is gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna swallow all the pieces inside yeah. me. Yeah. That's definitely gone. Send them down to my stomach. I'm gonna find one of the pieces, move it in, connect the other piece, push, sticking them back together. And they're gonna to start to come back up now. Oh my god! <laughs> Thinking. Oh. oh my god, that is disgusting, but also very good. Yeah, a bit weird. <laughs> but well, that just fits your style. Wow. Top of the spot when you ask me something, I went off. Yeah, I know, but that's yeah. great because you can do this anytime, anywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. So, well, I happen to have some polos in my pocket. I was like, yeah. what do I have? Polos. Okay. So when? Oh um, my god. When, <laughs> so when do you um oh, I don't know what to say now. Are you are you releasing this on is this something that people can learn or how did you even uh, no. this stuff? Yeah, that's that's uh, what that's, I love that, about that. That's a different is, interview, isn't it? That's that's for yeah, a that's, that's, talk. Yeah. that's not even a trick, but it looks yeah. like magic. So that's why yeah. I love it because yeah. it's something I can do it anytime I want. It's a weird mm. trick, but it's not a trick. Yeah. <laughs> Only you can do this. <laughs> yeah. Well Makes me sense. and six of us. All right, Stevie Starr is one of them. That's the that's the only guy that I know. Like right? that yeah, guy, a few, you, and then David Lane. Others. Yeah, yeah, Dixon Pong, uh, Winston, uh, a, a guy from Czech Republic, another guy. So wow. there's a few of us. Now that you yeah. want to do something, yeah, sure. 
um, let's. It's actually the, the the next thing I'm about to publish. It's already filmed. So we'll do something with the card. Are the tone and the sword you're talking about here? Yeah? yeah. Okay. So I'll have to fold it first. And I'll tear it apart. But I want it actually here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to restore it. But yeah. first I'll need to tear it some more. Because, uh, you know, zeros you do it with four pieces. Yeah. And I'll put those here. Uh, right now, I'll focus on uh, those two. Mm -hmm. And I'll try oh, wow. to restore those. Oh, my God. That's great. Thank you. Um, the next part, the, the next piece, um, I'll try to do that one a little bit quicker. Oh, wow. Man, that's seriously good. That's fooling me. I don't know how you nice. do this. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, the last piece is the hardest one because I actually okay. have to restore it on two edges. One is that one and one is that one. Wow. And the card is fully restored, is... Uh, fully examinable. Uh, they can keep it. That's amazing. That's great. That's yours. That's your um, trick. The new one. That's uh, yeah, that's that's my next one. It's gonna be a download too. It's ungimmicked. And okay. uh, if you want, you can do it signed. You can do it however you want. Amazing. Okay. So, so thank you for watching. Thank you all of you for coming down and taking the time to chat with me. Uh, thanks to all the people on YouTube that are commenting on these videos. I really appreciate the time and effort you're taking to watch these videos and sharing them and spreading the word about the channel. So uh, I'll see you everyone very shortly in about three or four days. I'm going to try and post videos quite regularly. So take care everyone. Bye-bye.